Oh, is, it, is this going now? It's going. Okay. And feel free to uh, drink. Yeah, we should just feel comfortable about it. But the way, the way that I think it would start would be that I would say, hello, I'm Neil Mossy, and welcome to the We Are The Problems podcast. Okay. For the first one, basically, I'd be putting these on YouTube and yep. then taking the audio and releasing the audio as a, as a podcast. Okay. I don't know what you call a video podcast. No one has nailed a good... Vlog. A vlog or a vlogcast, maybe? Vodcast. Yeah, see, that's accurate, but it's really inelegant. The way it would work is that... Well, I might as well just, just do it now. I've been writing comedy. Well, we've both been doing our thing in the ent- entertainment yeah. industry for... Well, we've been aware of each other for like 25 years. Yes. For 16 years, I've been writing with a writing partner. Yep. And I split up with someone about two years ago, and I've, I've been doing okay. Yeah. But I really miss writing material with someone else. Right. Another comedy writer. Yeah. Which would be great, but I... You know, they're hard to come by. So I thought, why don't, why don't I be <coughs> promiscuous? Why don't yeah. I a meet up with people whose who's, who's work I Intellectually enjoy. promiscuous. Yeah. And, yeah, and that would mean that I could also write material in real time with friends and former colleagues from other disciplines, which is why I wanted to meet up with you. So thanks so much for being my first. Thank you. I think I'm going to call all of them a pilot. I call yeah, every an endless pilot. Yeah, yeah. The, the we are the problems comedy writers podcast with Neil Mossy pilot zero zero. The one. endless pilot. The, the, yeah. the, the, the preparation never ends. Yeah, and I'm going to put a cap on because it is the hottest day of the year. Yes, I've got two things that I can offer you. One yeah. is that any material that comes up yeah. is ours. Yeah. And there's videographic evidence yeah, of where yeah, it came yeah. from. And if if we wanted to find you online, do you have a place online? Just to, just Mark A. Wright on face, Facebook. Facebook, really. I, and I put the A in because um, everyone thought, well, not everyone, but thought I was the guy from TOWIE. See, I didn't think that we would get such a great filming position. We're in the New Sussex pub, which is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, it in, is. In, in Lansing. Lansing. I write jokes about topics that I have negative feelings towards. Yes. And that's where the comedy comes from. Yes. And if you go deep enough into the subject, you can see the point where it goes beyond pointing my finger at it. You realise that you are the problem right. with the problem. And I've got like this permafrost of about 20 topics that right. I, haven't, I haven't tackled. Okay. I've got indecisiveness, black tie, that might be a good I, one. I wear those perform. regularly, yeah. Plastics, uh, my email inbox, YouTube, energy companies, theatre, personal finances, electric cars, privatised trains. I haven't had a single near-death experience. It'd be ironic if I died just after this, but... It would. So that wouldn't, but that wouldn't, still wouldn't be near-death experience, that'd just be a death experience. Shuffle the pack. Right, these are topics that I haven't even been able to look at. Right, OK. OK, personal finances. I've got this word association for uh, all, all aspects of right. personal finance. Bank. Banks are greedy. Banks are a hassle. We always attach emotion to banks. Like, like, it's, like, it's, like it's a personal insult to us, or they've personally got it in for us. And we need to learn to move away from that and learn to move away from feeling aggrieved by the actions of a bank. Right, because they're just doing what they do. They're doing what they do. Um, and, but, but we know this is what they do. That's the trick with banks, is to not take it personally, which is difficult to do when you've been indoctrinated with pigs and money boxes and stuff yeah. from when you were a kid. Can I ask you about, because we can cut this out, you, um, I don't know, how would you describe yourself? In terms of your job, um, I, yeah, even though I, I've known you for like 25 no, no, years, I, 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 I would consider question. myself a uh, professional entertainer. But somebody once described me as party Elvis. 
because if you listen to an Elvis or watch an Elvis concert and listen to an Elvis concert, he didn't do many of his biggest hits. So quite often he, would, he wouldn't do Suspicious Minds. He never did Viva Las Vegas. He never did those songs. But I figure most people, the Elvis album that they might have, above all else, is Elvis number ones. Did you have to get the, the, the costume and the... The wig and everything? Yeah. The costume, I, well, I got a cheaper costume to begin with. But, but then I, I then got some professional costumes made by a company called B&K in the States, and they're made from the same patterns as Elvis's own. They're exact replicas. So they cost almost two grand each, and that was in 2004. Oh my God. But people would like to see the authenticity of it, so you walk out and go, oh, I recognise that costume. In Vegas, you might go out during Love Me Tender and take six minutes giving everyone a kiss and a handshake. He wouldn't stand on a table and sort of, you know, get him, like Mick Jagger style, getting everyone to interact. He never did that, whereas I do that. That must wreck the £2,000 jumpsuit. No, no, no. no. There's, so, there's a reason why they were designed in the way they were designed. So Elvis could do these moves with freedom. Yeah. And they were designed on, he wanted the freedom to move in the way that he could in a karate suit, because he did karate moves on stage. So those jumpsuits, which are obviously very open down to just above the navel, um, they're actually very free. The next one on the list is pounds. Whoa! Our parasol. Oh, oh. sorry, you're right. I can unplug you. It's at our tent. It's blown away. So we're quite near the coast here in you know Lansing. What I'm going to get some chips. Do you want something to eat? Oh, oh yes. Man. This is wonderful. Look at this. We've got fish goujons, chicken goujons. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got more personal finance terms. Is there anything about cash that is annoying or useless or unnatural? Coins. Well, I had this discussion with my son. We got the, we, I think we're agreed that the one pound coin is the, the best coin. Mm. The two pound coin is it's just really annoying mm. now. Just the look of it itself, it feels a bit gawky and awkward. There's something about the one pound coin, the proportions are right. It feels like one pound. Yeah. The two pound coin, it's, 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 got, it's, it's got ideas above its station. <laughs> is it twice as big? I don't think it is. No. And that's another reason why it's a bit rubbish. It, you know, it wants to be a fiver. Really, in an ideal world. It's like a caterpillar. The, 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 the fire is like the butterfly. Whereas a one pound coin knows its status. It's like, I'm functional, I do a job. If you need something small, I'm your man. Yeah. And so I, two and pound coin is going, oh, hang on. Get a little bit more than that. It's like, no, you can't actually. You're just, all you're useful for are things that cost one pound 14. That's where you come into play. One pound 14, that's not that much more than a pound. And do you feel like you have savings if you if you have debt. Yeah, which is crazy. But even the even the debts are outweighed by other savings. Yeah, and, and stuff that I've. Got. Are you in credit in life? Or are I you? I think generally, yeah. But I've got no, I've got nothing too scientific to base that on. I'm, I'm, I feel ahead. But if there were some catastrophe. Yep. I wonder if cavemen felt that. You know, I've got this cave, but if there's some tsunami or rockfall, what good's that? How would the cavemen, and we assume it is the men that did this, allocate the caves? Because there must have been some caves that were nicer than other caves, right? So it must have been in a pecking order. You think there's a system? Yeah. An estate, a cave agent. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So we're going, let's go a bit of damp. They've all got damp. Yeah, and he's wearing a flash um, fur, yeah. 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 And his like hair and beard are slicked back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The caveman estate agent. <laughs> we're saying, now this is a very desirable spot overlooking the Serengeti. Good access to the community fire. <laughs> yeah, there are very few cheetahs around this area because we're, we're on high ground here. And it's quite a deep cave. So there's a bit of privacy. Uh, the other ones, I mean, you're just on show. Sub cave for the little ones. Yeah. I think they did. But that would have been allocated through brute force and strength. So, so the caveman that would have had that, yeah. he would have been the caveman that, that were, was able to kill the bison or the buffalo, yeah. depending on where you are. And so providing food. So therefore there would have been deference. So, so it came from brute force. 
right, all status would have come from Lord of the Flies. So I think it's only relatively recently that society has stopped being Lord of the Flies. So money, money is the invention of wimps to gain control over people that might punch you in the mouth. Yeah. And then, because what happens when people get lots of money? Well, they move far away from everyone else, around either a wall around their house or a detached house or a gated community. To prevent force to taking it away to, from yeah, to, Yes, yes. To prevent them from being punched in the mouth by someone tougher. Because they know if it came to that, they would lose. So they have to put value on that. And, but, so they apply themselves to move into an alternate system. So on our banknotes, it, it should be, I promise to pay the bearer one punch in the mouth. If it was done like that, we, we would be so in debt. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Carney just going around one of the But we would be so in debt because we're wimps, right? <laughs> People, wimps, created money to, to, um, control, to control the yeah. world. And so they didn't get a punch in the mouth and to keep tough people at bay. Look, I've got some more words here. It might be easier. Should we, should we just pick one more? You pick one. Cards. Cards, OK. Yeah, we've not talked about cards. Yeah. I, I, it felt really special when I got my first money card. And yeah, it was like a choice of plastic things that you could get. We had a camp with um, Halifax. It was a building society. So there were no gimmicks like that. And I can remember as a kid looking at Nat West. I don't know, I want to like a comedy pig. I'm not sure a branding agency would align a bank with pigs, with a pig. these days. Well, would right. They? I'm not <laughs> sure that. No, that wouldn't be the, uh, the obvious it. icon. Oh, yeah, but that was a time when it was all about getting rich. Certainly the 80s was about get rich. So it's been get proud rich. in being a pig. Yeah, look at you, you're a fat cat. You've made it. You're a pig, big fat pig, a well fed fat pig. Well done. Now you get your card out and you just go, I can't do that. Yeah, would you? Do you do that? I do it all the time. But I think there's something good that your car, you have to penetrate a machine, mm. that there is a physical union. You're looking at the figure as you're doing it. Yeah, but then I'm now picking up the bacteria from everyone else who's been keying in their digits. Do you? I don't, I, you don't do the knuckle. <laughs> the knuckle. No. The knuckle press. Oh, God. That's genius. I do. Why am I not doing that? Well, I need to do the knuckle press thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I always do that. Do, 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 hey, this do, is do. the circle. So you're back to the punch in the face. There we go. That is. That, that's, <laughs> I'm you're pun- keeping it. I'm punching. On the level. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That's your work. There we go. Uh, that is a perfect place. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I feel so much better now about this. I think we found we found yeah. the problem. And there's no shame in being the jester and being a wimp because your nose is straight. Right, thanks so much for sort of interrupt your sweet potato chip. No, that's good. Do you, want that, do you want that? Do you want that? No, 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 please. You go for it. Uh, thanks to the New Sussex pub in Lansing for hosting this. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got this far in the video, if you could click on uh, the thumbs up just to let us know that you got this far, that would be an awesome thing, an awesome gift. Why not click on the subscribe button? Uh, YouTube unleashes all kinds of Algorithms. gifts. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you hit a thousand subscribers. See, we're undoing everything we talked about now <laughs> by you begging for these gifts. All I'm saying is, I will never reach a thousand, I don't think, because I've got another 800 to go. But right. just taking me one notch closer would mean the world to me. It so would validate you. Yeah. <laughs> it would validate me electronically as a completely made up arbitrary figure. So thank you for subscribing, (laughs) Mark. Thanks so much. Don't forget, if you want to see Mark electronically online, the link to his Facebook home is there. Yeah, just search Mark A. Wright Elvis and and you'll find me. Uh, Remember to put the A in, otherwise you will get the guy from TOWIE. Thanks so much for listening and we'll be back with another problem to go through on the next video in the playlist. Thanks again.